Hey guys, my name is John. In today's video, I'm actually gonna be revisiting a previous project. I read a bunch of your comments and there were certain things that I did incorrectly in that project. Um, list of those comments here. And so today's video, I'm going to uh, fix those by opening things back up. So what I'm gonna be fixing today is this outdoor outlet that I installed back in November. So pretty much it's uh, connected to a junction box on the inside and goes down this conduit into this outdoor outlet right here and then into this transformer which powers these lights along my pathway. All right, so there are a few things that I got wrong, so I'm gonna fix those right now. And so the first thing is that I used the wrong type of wire. The second thing is that I used the wrong type of outlet or GFCI. And then the third thing is that I had the GFCI upside down. The issue with the wiring is that I used a 14 gauge wire even though the breaker on the inside is a 20 amp breaker. So that's too thin of a gauge to put wire for. And then also that I was running Romex instead of THHN. So THHN is the preferred wiring for outdoor use. And so thanks to both Greg and Wayne for pointing that out to me. All right, so the next issue was that I didn't show myself properly grounding the box. I don't remember if I did, but I'll fix that today. So thanks to David, Steven, and Kelly for pointing that out to me. And then one additional thing is someone pointed out that I was not using a weather resistant GFCI. This box is actually pretty good and it hasn't done anything like out of the ordinary and I trust it but still I'm going to replace it with a res weather resistant GFCI anyways. All right so kind of a long intro but thanks to all the commenters that pointed those issues out because um, those are actually very valid issues especially in the case of a fire so I'm going to go fix those today. All right so what I picked up from Lowe's for today's video is this 12 gauge stranded THHN so this is a black color and then I also got a green color uh, sadly, Lowe's only had the 50 foot in stock, even though I only need about 10 feet. Uh, this is about a twice as expensive, but I think that's how they get you. And then I also got this white tape. So um, I'm not gonna be, so I only got black wire. And because of that, I'm gonna be using the black as both the neutral and the hot. And to mark out the neutral, I'll just type it with this white wire. I think that's how it should be done. It says it's excellent for color coding. And so, well, if I'm not doing it correctly, people will comment and I will know. All right, so I'm in my garage and this is the outlet that I'm actually drawing power from that's going down through that conduit. And so I'm just gonna go through here and you guys can see here that I've got 20 uh, amp breakers. I'll just turn them all off. Well, one of them's to my mini fridge. I think my mini fridge will be okay. Anyways, so I've turned off all the breakers and just using my receptacle checker to make sure that it's not on. So I don't see any light, so it's good. Then just take the cover off and then unscrew the outlet. All right, so then I've got the outlet pulled out, so I'm just gonna unwire it. All right, so now that I've got the outlet off, I can look all the way into the back. It's kind of dark in there, but I did drill a hole going out to the wall, so I'm going to actually remove that wire now. So if none of this is making sense, uh, here's a link to the previous video where I kind of went way more in depth on how to wire this stuff. So this, I'm more or less just backing out of what I did there. All right, so I've removed the outlet and also separated the wires. So this was the 14 gauge wire that I was using here. You can see like the difference in gauge right there, kind of. So the issue with using a 14 gauge wire is that this is on a 20 amp breaker. And because of that, the lower the gauge, the higher, um, I'm not like an electrician, but I know that you want a thicker wire so that it doesn't get as hot. So anyways, uh, I'm going to be removing this wire and then replacing some of the stuff with 12 gauge. All right. So then from the outside, I have to remove this outlet so that I can pull the wire from the inside or outside, I guess. All right, so I've removed the outlet at the bottom and going up here, I also sprayed this insulation on the inside to kind of keep water from coming into the junction box on the inside. So I think what I'm gonna to have to do is just cut it right here and then probably drill that hole back in. So for the insulation, it seems that I can just pull it out and it seems to be working fine. And there we go. And now I can just cut this. 
So it's stuck on some of the PVC glue, I think. <clears throat> oh, got it. This is one of the reasons you don't 100% want to use Romex for running wire through conduit is because it's pretty rigid um, and it's difficult to run through. But with the THHN, since it's stranded as opposed to the solid wire, it's a little bit more flexible and easier to run through the conduit. And also I think you can run more wires inside the conduit. I did a little bit of research and I think you can fit up to, so in this I'm using half inch schedule 40. And I believe the chart that I looked up said that you can put up to eight 12 gauge THHN wires in it. Now I just need to wire this back up, but with THHN instead. Just doing a quick comparison of the Romex versus the THHN. So this is the Romex, which is a lot more stiff, and this is also a 14 gauge, so it's actually smaller than the THHN. But here you can see that it's just a lot more flexible, and because of that, it's um, a lot more useful for pulling through conduit like I'm doing here. So to wire it in the same way, I've pretty much cut out three different pieces, two black and one green. So I'm actually gonna label one of these black wires as a white and using that white marking tape from earlier. I'm gonna do that after I run it through the wall though. So pretty much what I'm gonna do is insert it through that hole. I've also taped up the wires so that as they go through the hole, they don't get caught on anything. So I'm just gonna push it through. All right, so now that the wire is through the wall, I'm gonna use this fishing reel wire thingy. I forget what this is actually called, but I'm gonna actually draw it from the bottom, have it come up here. I'll tape this again to that and then just fish it through. Push it back down and let's see if this goes. So I'm just gonna start pulling it. All right, so I've pulled the wire through and now I'm just gonna go through and label one of these black wires as a white by taping it with the white tape. I'm just gonna figure out um, which one is each on each side by just pulling one slightly longer than the other. I made sure that both the wires that I, all the, I made sure that all of the wires I cut are the exact same length. So I'm just gonna pull one wire um, from one side, tape it, and then go on the other side and find the shorter one and then tape that one. All right, so you can see that I labeled this one black wire with a white piece of tape right there. So I'm just gonna cut them now so that I have less wire dangling around everywhere. All right, so for the interior outlet, I finished wiring that up and now I just need to wire up the outdoor outlet. I didn't really show myself wiring this because that's kind of out of the scope of this video, but if you guys wanna see an explanation of how to do that, I have a video link right up in the corner right there. All right, so the last thing to do is just install this on the outside of the wall. You can see right here that it's weather resistant and tamper resistant. All right, so now I've got my GFCI wired up. You can see that the neutral is on this side, the hot is on this side, and then for the ground, I listened to you guys and grounded it into the metal box. So I have the ground coming in from the inside of the house or the inside of the garage. I pigtail it. One side goes to the outlet and one side goes to the box. So it's screwed back in and powers back on. So just gonna plug this in and both of them are lit up. So it's wired up correctly. So now I just need to put this weatherproof cover back on and we should be good to go. All right, so I've cleaned everything up. Everything's cocked back up. All right, so I've cleaned up the area, put the cover back on, also caulked around the seams, and also plugged back in my transformer so you can see that it's powered on. So it works. Okay, so to recap, Originally this had 14 gauge wire in it. I replaced it with 12 because I originally thought that the breaker was a 15 amp breaker and with 15 amp you can use 14 gauge wire, but actually it's a 20, 20 amp breaker so you have to use 12 gauge. I also originally had Romex in this conduit and in conduit you normally want to use THHN. I didn't know what that was in my previous video so I've replaced that with this now. THHN is a little bit better for conduit because I think there's less heat in it and also it's more flexible so it's easier to pull through wire. And then the last thing was that the original GFCI was not weather resistant, it was just tamper resistant, so I've replaced it with that weather resistant one. 
So pretty much I made a few mistakes in that first video. I've learned from those mistakes, especially from your guys' comments, and hopefully you guys learned something as well. I couldn't find any videos on running THHN outdoors, so that's why I kind of made this video to hopefully help someone out there. So if this video was helpful to you, consider subscribing or liking the video. And if I did anything else wrong, let me know in the comments. Until next time, this has been John Hang. Thanks again for watching.